Hi guys, hope y'all are doing well today. Today I just want to talk a little bit about separation anxiety. Now before the year 2020, most of us had never heard of the phrase social distancing. Then within what seemed like a matter of days, we went from meeting with our friends at local coffee shops to wearing face masks, quarantining in our homes, and using technology as our means of interaction with each other. Suddenly these concepts were not just for prisoners or poison victims or um, criminal injuries or anymore. They were for all of us. Turns out though, this idea of setting oneself apart has long been part of God's process in developing his people for usefulness and impact. Jesus demonstrated it himself and during 40 days of solitude before entering into public ministry, we see that in Matthew chapter 4 verse 1, throughout his early life, he would often slip away into the wilderness. Uh, Luke 5, 16, to be uh, uh, alone with God, usually in the early mornings and while it was still dark, uh, which is in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Social distance, before the rest of us even knew social distancing was a thing. As far back as 1 Kings chapter 17, we see God prescribed for Elijah a, seasons, a season of separation as a necessary stop on the prophet's journey to spiritual maturity. 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 3 says, Go away from here and turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Ch Cherith. I'm probably not saying that name right, so don't. It's in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 3. Um, but hide yourself by the brook, which is east of the Jordan. Concealed in the hills is where God had called him to quarantine himself as a place of silence and widespread solitude. This secluded spot away from everything was the perfect place for God to accomplish the next stage of his intended work, work in uh, the life of his servant. Stones and scorpions were around more in Cherith than people and luxuries. But Elijah's calling for the time being would not keep him from the palace or the aim throbbing heart of the masses where he could see up close the effects of his drought pronouncement on the king and his people. Instead, he was being ordered to separate himself or to quarantine himself. Out, way out where he had not been able to consult with or depend on any other human. To simply be alone with God. Here, he'd need to entrust the results of his ministry to the one who'd called him to Ahab's court in the first place and who just as clearly had called him away now into the next leg of the process. When God suddenly removes us from a season that's been populated with many people and relationships into one that's marked by solitude, it can be unsettling. Why might such an abrupt shift sometimes be necessary in adjusting our perspectives, pruning our pride, and reorientating our process? The quarantine of Cherith is where he keeps teaching us. And whenever he's wanting to reshape and refocus us in areas where our flesh has begun to take control, or just to prepare us for the next stage of our journey with him. He'll whisper, my child, trust in me. Go away from where you've been. Cut unnecessary strings and passions, ambitions, people, and pleasures that are dividing your affections and allegiance. 
Turn your energy and attention in a new direction toward new goals. And I will show you. Hide yourself there and rest until I release you. Pay attention when you sense God's Spirit speaking to you in this way. Notice that there are there are the same three things he said to Elijah. The first thing he said was, go away from here. When the Spirit begins to whisper his directives, you'll sense a rise of conviction in your soul about a current aspect of your life, compelling you to leave behind a habit, an ambition, perhaps even a relationship that you may not want to leave. I'm not talking about God-honoring commitments that you've made to a spouse or a child, but entanglements with certain people that are keeping you from going where he wants you to go. The second thing he told Elijah, and he speaks to us too, is to turn. As you obey and separate yourself, He'll begin to show you a new direction, interest, or goal to pivot toward. This clarity might not be immediate, but he will slowly begin arranging your heart and hands in a new direction. When he does, go that way and turn that way. And the third thing that he showed Elijah, and he shows us also, is hide. Fully rid yourself from idols that's pulling back against your commitment to him and making you half-hearted. Then press into a new internal posture and external dynamic that Cherith requires. And rest here until he determines it's time to release you. Elijah is not the only one who God called to separate. We can look at several people throughout the scriptures that has uh, was in the process of separation and it helped shape their lives of well-known biblical personalities. Four people come to mind and that's Joseph. And we can read that in Genesis chapter 39 verse 11 through 29. Moses, in Exodus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12, Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 20 through 28, and Paul, in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15 through 14. These are just to name a few that were called to separate themselves. Joseph, he didn't know, yet know while in prison that his character was being shaped for becoming the compassionate prime minister of Egypt. Moses, in the field of Midian, far away from his people, could never have imagined that he had been commissioned as Israel's lead freedom fighter. Samuel, separated as a child from his parents, didn't know his future service would require an ear for God's voice that needed the quietness of God's house as a learning laboratory. And Paul didn't know his years in obscurity was preparing him to be one of the primary apostles of the first century church. Their missions, their ministries, eight in each case was different. But God had ultimately took them to periods of seclusion. And periods of seclusion did not devalue or derail them or denote a lapse in God's pleasure toward them. Instead, while Elijah, isolation provided vital to God's process of preparing them for lives of maximum fruitfulness. It's where their passions were shaped and their ambitions purified where they met God in new and unexpected ways. Elijah, unbeknownst to him, was being prepared for a public showdown that would determine a level of courage, conviction, and inner fortitude he did not yet possess. At Cherith was one of the places where God would produce it in him. Don't despise the solitude that God puts you in. 
the spiritual power you desire and will soon require cannot be cultivated in any other place but in the quarantine and quietness and the solitude that God puts us in in times. And that's all I have for you today. Um, sometimes God puts us in places. Uh, he takes us out of places, and we don't understand it at the time. But he takes us out of places uh, because he wants us to grow and get stronger and closer to him for the new mission, the new um, ministry or something that he has for you to do, the new thing that he has you to do. You need to grow in him, and that's important. We grow each and every day. You never stop growing in him. You learn something new each and every day. So don't give up, and uh, don't get down or depressed when you're in Cherith, when God has you in that place um, where you're separated from people. He may be moving people out of your life. He has me. He's moved people out of my life. Um, he may be um, taking things that don't really need to be there. In other words, um, they may be causing you uh, to sin, maybe. And maybe not that. It's just he's, he's moving you into a new place for spiritual maturity. And I hope you all got something out of the study. Please leave me a comment and let me know if you got something out of the study or if I just ramble. <laughs> Sometimes I ramble. So, uh, as always, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Like, share, and subscribe. Join me on the Disciple server. Link is in the description. And if uh, feel free to email me. My email is in the description also if you're not on the Disciple server. And if I don't see you in the next video, I hope to see you in heaven. Bye, guys.